us in the Informa studios, Kuso Gunwadna from the Elite Academy at Melbourne University, a place where people go to help themselves get, recover from sporting injuries. Now, you and I have spoken before about some of the initiatives and some of the sporting aids that you've added to the marketplace. But I think you, what you're here today to do is to help us all understand that our approach has got to change to the way we heal our bodies. In elite sport, for example, you hear quite often a hamstring has gone and you wonder it's going to be three or four weeks. No, 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 it's going to be much more than that because you guys ascertain that those hamstrings come from a back issue or a hip issue or something and it's got to, you've got to attend to that first before you can actually get to the hammy. Exactly. Is that, is that about right? Exactly, George. And a lot of people don't realise this, that you know, even a hamstring injury, which is very common, oh. people just treat the hamstring, thinking that's where the pain is, that's where the treatment should be. But it's the incorrect way of thinking about what that, what, how to solve that problem. I like to talk about the human body as a, as a transformer. So you have a transformer who transforms into a car or a car that transforms into mm -hmm. a robot. Mm -hmm. Now imagine one component of that robot doesn't or it's is stuck and it doesn't transform. So the human body is the same way that if there is a hamstring problem we as physiotherapists now we assess the whole body. Mm. We make sure all the nerves, the muscles, the joints, the ligaments are all functioning properly. So the last thing you're doing is isolating any areas. You're into the whole body. Yes, it has to be a holistic view. Okay. And the good therapists out there will have this holistic view to say, well, there's a hamstring issue or the pain is in the hamstring or there is a tear there, but what caused What's it? What's causing it? And if you can think of a problem in that way, you're going to solve it faster. Or resolve it a lot quicker. Yes. Uh, tell me something. As we get older, I notice sporting injuries are becoming infinitely frequent. Um, how do we assess uh, the best uh, way to recover? Niggling injuries mean what? That we're not doing it properly? That we're only half thinking our way through it? Yes. So when you get niggles yep. or when you get stiffness, tightness, it's yep. actually a warning signal from your body. And this warning signal is started by your CPU, which is your brain. Uh -huh. So the brain says, look, something's wrong, George. It's called inflame, inflammation. One of those, uh, you know, the side effects uh, or one of the signs are, is this inflammation. Okay. But you're going to get three phases. I, I talk about the red zone. The red zone is pain, discomfort. You talked about inflammation and everything is just not allowing the person to do the things that they love. Mm. Then that's the worst scenario. That's when a lot of people come and see us. <laughs> At the last end, yes. when it's no longer bearable. That's right. Yeah. Before people hit the red, they, their bodies go through amber or yeah. yellow. Yeah. And what that is, is stiffness, tightness, annoyance. Yes. But people persevere through that. So is that. that the injury onset? Is that the... That's one of the starts. Ah. The brain is then saying, look, something's not right. So it'll continue to create this warning signal where it goes from yellow to red or amber to red. Mm. But what we should be doing is living in green. Uh -huh. There's only about 5% of us that always are in green and it's never, it's never possible to always remain in green because our lifestyle means we have to you know, uh, do activities, you know, create movement. So we don't hardly ever, we're not always in green. Specialists tell us that uh, the greatest way to help those with back injuries and other things is to be active, mm -hmm. right? But as we get older, we challenge ourselves in different ways. We spend hours, of course, uh, working, and that can mean sedentary behaviour. Mm -hmm. uh, what are the sorts of things that we need to be doing? Should we be planning every couple of weeks a remedial massage? Is this something that should be programmed into our system? Definitely. Our bodies work very much like cars. So the more running you have of your car, you get yep. it serviced more regularly. Yes, you do. Now, what you do for your own body, how to service it, is completely up to you. Some people need physio, osteo, chiro, acupuncture, whatever it is, massage. Or a combination of the above. Yes. Yeah, yeah. But whatever works for you, you need to make it, put it in your calendar, and you don't break that habit. But the message you're giving us today is understand that when you have an injury, don't look at it as just that point where it's hurting. 
look at it as how it affects the whole body. So whether it's calf, for example, mm. why did that calf have a problem? Yes. If it's a knee, why did it come in, ankle and so on. Exactly. As I was touched on earlier, I had a, 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 an attack of gout, mm. didn't really realise that it had been 10 years since I'd had an attack, kept walking thinking I, I was, it was a bit of stiffness and it just made the rest of my ankle worse mm. to the point where I had, I had an inflamed tendon. So I had to go back, touch the first, get the gout sorted before we could uh, get back to the ice and get the, uh, the tendon underway. So what you're saying is, look at a problem yes. in its totality, not just in that one spot. That's right. And gout's a good example where the problem was quite localized. Yep. Okay. If there was a fracture, yes, it's very localized. So we need to treat that first. But when it comes to everyday wear and tear, we, the body will break, break in, the, in the most common area that you use. So most people, it's the back, you know, athletes, people who are active, hamstring, yeah. knees, You hear the expression, calf. let go. The back's let go or the hammies let go. Yeah. It is that point of resistance yes. and it's just can't do so anymore. So what I like to do then is think, oh, well, why did that happen? And that's where that full analysis comes so in. So it could be a, a, a gait, your running style could be exacerbating the problem, your walking style, you might need podiatrists to come in and assist uh, and do whatever. These are the things that people don't ordinarily think about. But at the Elite Academy at Melbourne Uni, you guys uh, basically put everyone through the ringer. Pretty much, we're very comprehensive. Yeah, yeah. And also going back to the car analogy, if you go to the mechanic and you know something's wrong with the engine, you want your mechanic to have a look at everything. Yeah, yeah. And say, oh, look, here's the full checkup done. Yeah, yeah. And if you treat the body in the same, same way, way, you can't go wrong. Yeah. Chris Al Goodner Wadner from the Elite Academy at Melbourne Uni. Uh, he's going to be a regular contributor on the Informer. And each and every uh, few weeks we'll get him in here, we'll talk about different things. Uh, get him on the dynamometer because he loves talking cars and transformers. But uh, my father had a dynamometer. It was a fantastic uh, elite tool. And let me tell you, it worked miracles for all his clientele. Great. Thank you, Goodner. No problem.